Hey, I'm James, and this is Real Vibes Gaming. Now, tons of stuff has been leaked about the new Xbox, but how much of that can we actually trust? Now, Kotaku recently posted a full article listing all the specs and relevant info for the new system. All the info, of course, coming from a source who is not official and only mildly trustworthy. You know, I, I want to take a little bit of time and talk about what I think is likely and unlikely in the new Xbox that's going to be coming out, hopefully at some time this year. Now first I'm going to talk about the power of the machine. I, now I'm no expert on hardware at all, but what they have, it, it looks it looks okay, it looks pretty good. I mean the graphics card looks like it's going to be alright, the RAM looks like it's up to par. You know, I would say, when I look at the specs, I just see, I look at it and go, it had better be at least, at minimum, this good. I mean, at minimum, these are basic specs for building an actual gaming PC. I mean, the CPU, it has eight cores. It doesn't look incredibly powerful. It's not going to be top of the line, but it can multitask, right? They mentioned this several times throughout the article, like, oh, it can multitask, do multiple things. Like, you mean that thing that my phone has been able to do for, for years now where I can I can call somebody and then also be surfing on the internet? <laughs> yeah, it, it had better. It had better be this good. It's just at bare minimum. Now, there's going to be a 500 gigabyte hard drive. This is it's interesting. It's not that bad. I, I would probably prefer a terabyte or hopefully get an option for a terabyte hard drive, but 500 gigabytes, it's pretty pretty solid size. Now, if the console does last for seven years like the Xbox 360 has, that space is going to be full just from the games I put on there. And especially since it does seem like games are going to be uh, have a required install on your system. Again, looks like them at the new Xbox and the PlayStation 4 are trying to combat piracy by requiring installs and things like that. Um, now, they apparently actually have a process where you can actually play right off the disc. So you put the disc in, you start playing right away, and the game is actually going to be installing in the background, which is interesting. I, I mean, if they are going to require an install, I really hope this is going to be a final feature there with the downloading in the background. Um, but that's still a lot of games that I'm going to be installing over the course of a seven year, I mean, even a five year cycle. It's still a ton of games. Now, I would rather not have to rely on like an external hard drive for this system for all my games and media. Now they actually mentioned in the article like, oh, 500 gigabytes should be plenty for, for your media needs. Yeah, I don't know about you, maybe I'm just really elitist on this whole thing, but 500 gigabytes isn't even close to the amount of space I need for music, movies, all my games, of course, just the operating system and all the apps for this thing is going to take up a ton of room. I mean, it's not a bad place to start, but I, I just wonder how much future upgrade potential there is going to be on such a closed system like these consoles are going to be. Now, this article claims that the new Xbox is actually going to come with a required connect. The thing has to be plugged in for the system to work and for you to be able to play your games and everything. I'm going to go ahead and say, in this article reports and everything, I, I don't see this actually happening. I really think, and maybe this is just me hoping this won't happen, but I really think the Kinect is going to be sold as an optional peripheral. Now, I, I believe Xbox can make way more money selling the kit separately. I mean, don't get me wrong, there will be all kinds kinds of bundle deals for the Kinect and the Xbox 360, and I'm sure that's how they would prefer to sell it. But the Kinect was something that boosted sales for a dying generation of games, I mean, it really, of consoles, rather, and it really it really kind of saved the Xbox, really boosted those sales up right in, in the last couple years here. It put a fresh new idea out there that people were interested in, and it rejuvenated Xbox sales and game sales and the like. I think the and a Kinect being sold as a peripheral for the Xbox can make them a lot more money and simply because, here's the big surprise, I think that if the Kinect was included, the system is going to be way too expensive at launch. For the specs out now, for a new controller, for everything that you need for the Xbox without a Kinect included, I would say that selling the system at $400, which is kind of what people are kind of expecting, that, that's still going to be selling the system at like a $400 loss. This it is going to be expensive at the start for Microsoft to make this thing. And if the brand new seemingly 500% increase in power Kinect is going to be sold with the new Xbox, the whole thing is going to be just way too expensive for Microsoft to even be able to handle. Five or six hundred dollar launch prices for the Xbox, they're going to be laughed out of town by consumers if they try and enter the market at such a price. But anything less means Microsoft is going to be just having to sell two extra controllers, four plus games and all that just to possibly break even on their system. There's no way they can make money off of that. 
and I don't really see Microsoft making the same mistake that Sony already made with the PlayStation 3 when they first, first announced and released that system. So, you heard it here first. <laughs> I mean, actually, I'm probably not the first person to, to kind of go against what I think what this article is trying to say. I don't believe it. I, I think a required Kinect experience, <laughs> uh, it's going to be something that I won't believe until I see it. I think simply there's going to be different tiers for the Xbox. You know, you can get it bare bones, you can get the bigger hard drive, you can get the system with the Kinect, and maybe, you know, they'll be throwing in a year of Xbox Live membership and things like that. I think using the Kinect as a bundle deal to push sales and holidays or bump up sales during low times is going to make a lot more money uh, for Microsoft, you know, and if they ever do make a good game for Kinect, <laughs> see what I did there, <laughs> it, it will incentivize people to head out and actually buy this extra peripheral on its own for its own separate price. And I, I think that in itself is also going to be a better business decision. In the end, if Microsoft comes out with a $400 Xbox that comes in with a, a Kinect that is required to play and use your Xbox at all, I will be shocked. Shocked because I think it's gonna be a waste of their money and shocked because it, by doing this, I, I feel like they're just saying that they don't think the Kinect is a good enough product to sell as a peripheral anymore. You know, and I really feel like 24 million copies of the Kinect sold worldwide. I really feel like that number speaks differently. Well, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe so you can watch me eat my words about my prediction here for the new Xbox. I'm sure we'll be getting all kinds of details here in the next couple months. Now, I wanna give a shout out to all the good people over at Gamers Junction. You know, view some of the other content on the channel and give ratings. Uh, to the ones you enjoy, you know, and if you like it, definitely subscribe. I really like what Gamers Junction is doing. But once again, I'm James, and this is Real Biased Gaming. Thanks for watching.